Hey, in this series on how I write, design, and self-publish my books, it's step number 12 of this process. It's time to design your front, back, spine, book covers for the printer using the custom kdp.com book cover template you just downloaded. Come on, let's check it out. Now, in the last video, we downloaded a custom book template just like this from kdp.com. And then we assigned all the guides all over the template. And then we removed the template so we could design our covers on this blank, empty canvas. Do note, you can use almost any graphic design program that you want to design your covers, such as Adobe Photoshop, which I never use, and I never will. Adobe Fireworks, which I love, and I've been using Fireworks for 20 plus years to design my book covers. But now my new favorite graphics design program is Affinity Designer, which I'll be using exclusively to design my book covers going forward. Also, do note, I won't be teaching you how to use any of these graphics design programs in this video. Now, we'll save those lessons for another playlist on that subject somewhere else on my channel. What I am going to do, though, is show you some of my cover designs, how I designed them, what goes into them, what's my thought process for designing covers, what's my formula for designing covers really fast, where do I get my ideas from, and then explain the process of converting a book cover design into a PDF file, which we will then upload to the printer along with your interior pages PDF file, so we can then print a paperback book. All right, let's get started. Now, without getting too technical about cover design, I want to go over some of the elements of your back and spine and front covers, just so you can start to get acquainted with the different sections and the different elements that make up your covers, you know, back, spine, and front. So initially, as you look at this cover design, take a look at these areas. You've got an area where the title will go in. You've got an area where the subtitle will go in. You've got an area where we're going to put your name, the author's name. Then we have the spine, of which you've got room to maybe put the title of your book, and then the author's name. And optionally, maybe your photograph, you know, like a headshot. On the back cover, now I designed my back covers really cool. I think. And what I like to do is I like to put the category of the book right here. I like to put the domain name for the book if I have one here. And I usually put some kind of, you know, header or call to action or some kind of statement that triggers some kind of response like single, lonely, still looking for the one for you, you know, to draw in the reader, some kind of header. And then I've got this reverse box here in white with the black text. And these images here are optional. But typically, you'd have some text on the back that the reader, you know, potential buyer, can read about your book and read it and go, wow, this was pretty cool. I, I want to get this book. And then in this area down here, this blank area, this is where we would put the barcode. So that's why you don't see anything here. And then optional. You could put a bio, just a quick little excerpt about who's the author and a little photograph and something about them to inspire the reader. Hey, this guy looks pretty cool. It sounds pretty cool. It's, I think I'll get the book. So keep these sections in mind when you design a book. For example, your title, your subtitle, the author area, the name for the author, the spine title goes there, author, maybe the name goes there author, bio in this area, the barcode, back cover story, content, and then maybe some kind of a call to action header title, category, domain name. Keep those things in mind when you think about designing your covers. Okay, Those are the different sections of covers that exist. Now, when it comes to elements of your title, well, you've got text. Here's text right here. This is text here. And basically, I just created a text box, and I just started typing whatever I wanted in there. And then I placed it however I wanted and wherever I wanted. I've also got boxes. This is sort of a box that separates the subtitle, also a text box. And I have this box here that separates the 
subtitle from the main body of the book because I want the subtitle to stand out. And then the author's name, of course, is text. And I could shrink this. I could make this smaller. You know, I could do whatever I want. I just like my name, you know, large like that. Pretty cool. I've also got on the front page, I've also got images. So here's a rose that I brought in. And you can tell that the edge is sort of feathered or blurry. It's faded. Kind of cool. I like that effect. I've got an image here that I got for free off one of the many stock photography websites that you can go get images for free. And I just placed it appropriately where it belongs, according to my design in my head. And I've got gradients. I've got different colors, maybe a patterned color, you know, just not a solid color, but maybe something with texture. It looks like there's something there. And then the spine, again, this is text right here, okay, text box right here. All of these are just text, and I can go in here and I can add more text, but I'm not, okay. And again, this is text right here, my name, and again, I can make my name smaller or larger. And just to show you, these text blocks are all within the guides that I created for the book. So wherever you see these blue guides, I have to stay within them when I create the cover. So you can imagine, you know, this author name right here looks pretty good because it's right within the guide. Okay, the left and the right. And the same with this text. You know, you can't have your text going over the guide. It's got to stay within. Yeah. And, for example, the image here on the front, this image stopped, you know. I wanted it to stop right at the edge of the spine, okay? And then all I did was I then repeated the image so that I almost did a, a mirror. So I took the image, you know, this image here, and I just brought it right to that edge. And then I had another image that sort of represented more grass, more field. Okay. And then what I did was I had that kind of make its way across the back cover. And then I took my red background. Okay. This image here, which I love, you know, red representing love, the heart. And all I did was I feathered or faded the edge. And then I just brought it over. And so you can see other elements that are on top of this empty canvas. And I just brought them over. And I just made it kind of faded a little bit so that you can see the grass, but you can't because it's kind of faded a little bit with this red. See, I can make it like that, but that would look kind of boring. So I bring in the red just a little bit. That looks nice, I think. And of course, let me get rid of all these guidelines so you can see what it looks like. And again, all I did was I just either, do I want a little bit? Do I want a lot? How much do I want? You know, I don't have to have that much to have the effect take place. And again, we've got text boxes here. Simply just type what you want. I've got a text box here. I've got, these are actually images of my other books that I brought into this program. And you can see, I can shrink it. And what I did here was I added this little sort of a feathered edge. Let me move this text box down. So I have this here, and what this has is it has kind of a, a glow around the edge. So I can make it kind of like, like it's faded a little bit, you know? And bring this down just a little bit, and I'll bring the text up. So you really can't tell a little bit. And then, of course, I did this where I had the, the road. The road is here, 
And all I did was I just dropped the opacity so that it sort of faded. And then you've got the text on top of this faded image, which makes it easy to read. And I've got the books, you know, Bart Smith, author of five relationship books. There they are. You know, just don't tell people something. Show them an image. You know, images paint, you know, a thousand words. And then write the storyline or use bullets or lists. Or I like to design my back covers last. I design them last because the back covers are hard to write for unless you know what you're writing. Well, you're not going to know what you're writing until the book's done. <laughs> so I design the front cover first before I start writing because I want inspiration for what I'm writing about. You know, look, go look at the book cover. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, I'm inspired. I'm going to go write. Well, when it's all done and the book's done and you got excellent copy to pull from from within the book, now you can go and write for the back cover, this area, and you can pull all kinds of great material. I pulled in an image for myself, a little photograph, text box, you know, right here, trying to respect the barcode area that goes here. Respecting also, lastly, the bleeds, the zones where we cannot put text. So this text here must not be anywhere in these areas. No, 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 no. It's got to be in the area where the text belongs. Because this is the area where text can't go. Here's the bleed. They're going to cut and trim right here. You know, that's where the book gets trimmed. So there's a lot to do that goes into designing covers, you know. But I'll tell you something. I am so glad that I have this skill. Because if I didn't, I'll tell you something. I'd have to go and hire somebody. And you know, that might be your case. Maybe you do have to go hire somebody to design your covers. What do you do? Where do you go? Well, check this out. Fiverr.com. Just look up book cover design. And, you know, you don't have to go to Fiverr.com, but I'm just giving you this example. Look at these cover designs. They're not bad. And look at the price. Totally affordable. So what I would suggest is you go contact someone to design your cover and say, hey, I'm writing a book. Would you please design for me a front cover? Just the front cover right now. I'm going to write the book. And when I'm done, I'll give you the copy for the backside. And then when I'm done, I'll direct you over to kdp.com where you can then enter the proper page number so you can see the spine width and then you can design the back cover with the front cover combined and the spine and we'll have the one single file needed to submit to the printer. Now let me go over a few examples of my covers so you can again see the elements and the sections that went into creating these covers and you can start understanding hmm now I know how covers are designed I'm gonna focus on my text my message my title, my subtitle, and then I'm going to tell the designer if you have to hire one exactly what I want. I'm just not going to go in there blindly and say, oh, I need a cover. No, you're going to have understanding of how covers are designed. Okay, good. So in this cover right here, I took the template. I had my guides. Once I had my guides all established, I took them away. <laughs> no, actually, I kept them here so I could design the cover because I have to have all the text within the guides. Can't go outside. But here's my text element, you know. Here's an image, text, a graphic, an image that portrays sort of what this book's about. It's about heartache and regrets, you know, relationship regrets. I've got my subtitle down here, and I wanted to differentiate some of the words. I just didn't want all white. So one of the lines has a gradient, sort of an orange-yellow, kind of cool. Got my name down here. I'll take these guides away. And we've got room for the barcode. We've got domain names here. Another image that sort of portrays what this book's about. Love that. And got some sections of the book. What's inside there? Paragraphs. We have our call to action. What I regret most is. Got a website. Got categories. This book is ready to go to the printer. Love it. Simple. To the point. Makes sense. 
Here's a cover using my networking tactics. Got a little starburst behind the my to kind of make it stand out. Kind of cool. I remember making that. <laughs> Get more business, more leads, more sales. This was kind of nice in this little box, you know, that's kind of separated from the main title. Then we have a subtitle here. Okay. And image to portray. Well, what is this book about? I always like to have an image. We've got uh, my name. We've got a paragraph that talks about the book. We've got lists, we've got bullets here. And let me just blow this up. And again, when you design these covers, they're done in high res. So this is only at 50% resolution. Let me bring this up to 100%. 100%. Now you can see it's clear. The text is very clean for printing. When it's downsized, just so we can see it all, well, that's not how it's going to print. You know, that's just low res kind of so I can see the whole thing. But it's actually a high res big file. So when you make changes to this and you save your work, it's going to take a little while for each change, each save. Uh, sometimes it could make the process of creating a book drag on. So we'll bring this back down. And basically, I'll show you the guides. Here's the guides showing us where and what stuff is. Here's the spine. This is a text box that I typed in the title. Made sure my name could also fit on the spine. Got a little image here. That's all we had room for was this little image right here. Had some white space. Let's fill it with a little image. Good. My networking tactics. Love this book. Mm. What no one else will tell you. All the tools, tactics, techniques, and tricks you need to know to be truly successful at networking. It really is a great book. Check it out. We've then got mm, my TV radio interview tactics and checklists. You know, I like this my. This was a text box. My. I wanted it kind of to stand out with the other words here. TV, radio, interview tactics. Kind of cool. My official training guide from tvguest.com. I like that. We have a gradient here. I didn't want just white. I needed to separate it. So this text box, this is going to be colored sort of a gradient. I like that gradient. Got my name. I needed a cool image. And this is vector art of a microphone. And I just have it kind of, you know, it takes up the front cover and it kind of extends over to the back cover through the spine. I like that. This is a short book. I don't know what it is. 80 pages, 90 it's not thick enough to have any text on the spine. So that's just what you get. But I like how the microphone makes its way onto the spine. Kind of cool. We've got our categories, our website. We've got our call to action. Are you ready for your big interview? We've got more content and text that describes what you will learn inside this book. And then we've got bullets. And I made room for myself. <laughs> that's a nice picture of myself. Got to update it when I can. <laughs> I love this cover. And I used this blue sort of gradient into black or a sort of a darker color. Okay, I'm just showing you the dark at the bottom and the blue at the top. It's a gradient. Good. I like it. Yeah. Here's one. Rich coach, broke coach, but this is the little brother. 150 mistakes coaches make. This is a text box on top of a black reverse box so it just kind of stands out I like that got our image here of the money for the rich coach got our pennies for the broke coach got our subtitle got our author name got our back cover with our category and our domain name title sort of a call to action headline jumps out at you got our paragraph that talks about what it is and I bold sometimes I'll bold the first sentence or so just so it stands out you know i don't want boring paragraphs and then again i got a little reverse box here with bullets you know these text boxes where i could put bullets lists kind of cool got the barcode area some more websites cool cover and again this is the little brother of the big brother rich coach broke coach this is an all-in-one coaching manual okay this is a eight and a half by 11 260 pages and it's a big book 
And what I did was I downloaded the template. I went to town designing the cover. And you can tell I stayed within the guides to make sure everything was correct. And we've got the text box, rich coach, broke coach. And then I wanted to include my forms. And I used this cool starburst, you know, the starburst uh, and then the text on top of the starburst. So I created the starburst and put that right there. I thought that was really cool. We got our $100 bills for the rich. We've got our pennies for the broke coach. Subtitle, author name, spine. We had enough room on the spine to put the title of the book and the author's name. Then again, we've got categories, a domain name. We've got all-in-one coaching manual. Got a nice little paragraph. And you know, I don't like to have all white, all black text. I like to break it up. So I've got a reverse box here with this black reverse box. And I've got the text box of the text that belongs in there, properly worded, carefully. Another paragraph, and again, the same thing. A reverse box that shows, you know, that this material can stand out. I want it to stand out. And here's the text box for the text that goes in here. Yeah, it looks good. Got a little image here. Excellent. And the remainder of the copy on the back. And we're set. This cover's ready to go to the printer. Send it away. Ah, TV guest. Learn how to prepare and pitch and become a TV guest. You know, right away, what stands out? This image right here. What is this about? What's this book about? Well, it's about being a guest on TV. Makes sense, right? That I have an image like this that portrays what this book is about. An official training guide from tvguest.com. Ku promotes the website. Learn how to prepare, pitch, and become a TV guest. All this text up here, these fonts, these colors, they're different, so they make each section of the text and the title stand out. Got the subtitle down here my name got some websites down here got the back cover area right here and in this case i started each paragraph with something hot something in red local national international tv shows need you the problem most potential tv guests have the solution to these problems potential tv guests have all of this written like sales copy you know like you're wanting to trigger emotions get people hooked Get people to read more. Oh, I'm hooked. What, what is this? The solution to these problems? Mm. Domain name up here. Text box. Call to action. Calling all experts, authors, storytellers, professionals. Do you see a pattern with these covers? How I design them? And I'm a nonfiction kind of guy. You know, I do nonfiction self-help. I did venture into a romance novel, which was a completely different genre. You know, that book's called Fantasy Boyfriend. Mm, good book. And lastly, this book cover right here, Fantasy Boyfriend. You know, this was a very interesting book cover to design because I originally had an idea to have a man on the front wearing white shirt because the white would contrast well with the text box, the cover, okay? And I have this in here twice for a reason. You saw this, right? Here's the one text box. Here's the other text box. I <laughs> got it in there three times. Well, the point is, sometimes I do that because the font itself is not very thick. So what I do is I copy the text, and then I just move it over. I nudge it over just a little bit. Okay? Just a little bit, making the text appear thicker. Because sometimes there's not a bold style for that font. Nonetheless, here's the deal. And this is very interesting. Here's the lesson. I found a sample placeholder model, male model, to put in this position to say, okay, this is what I want it to be like. I want the guy behind the text. I want to have the cover, the title, the subtitle, the author's name. But here's the deal. I don't want another guy on the cover of my book. I don't want to have to pay him you know, this model. I don't want to have to pay them 300, 500 bucks, whatever their fee is. I don't want them having 
oh, let's just say, um, you know, bragging rights. Oh, do you know I'm on the cover of Fantasy Boyfriend? No, I don't want any of that. If you can tell already, I like to keep everything that I do for my covers and my books. I like to keep them in-house. I like to retain all the rights. I don't want to be talking to anybody. I don't want to have to check in with anybody. I don't want to... No, 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 no. So I said to myself, dude, <laughs> if you're going to be on the cover of your book, you got to go work out. You got to lose some weight. Because maybe it was a just after Christmas time, you know, December, January. Got to get into those New Year's resolutions to kind of get in shape and look good. That guy on the cover of this book is me, Bart Smith. So I had to kind of get in shape so I could take a nice picture. And I think it's pretty cool. And I feel good that I'm on the cover in the sense that I don't have to pay a model. I don't have to worry about somebody coming back later when the book goes and becomes a movie and they want to sue me because, well, you know, I was on your cover and I want millions of dollars. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. So when you design your covers, be thinking with a legal mindset as well. What's going on the cover? Is somebody going to come back later down the road and sue me for something? You just got to beware. So when it came to this cover, I had the guidelines. I designed the cover within the guidelines. This was about a 260 page book. I had room to put the title of the book on the spine. I had my author's name and I had room in the center for my picture. So I put my picture in the middle too on the spine. So we've got the title, subtitle, got my name, got these images here, of these roses. I thought these were pretty cool. You know, had sort of a red into black, dark gradient. And these roses kind of faded into that nicely. I like that. We've got, a. Uh, I just decided to write a big paragraph on the back of the book. And again, up here at the top, we've got our categories. We've got the domain name. We've got sort of a title called action header what women want inside and outside of the bedroom. We've got a nice paragraph here that just, even though it's sort of a run-on paragraph, if you sit there and read it, you know, you got it in your hands, you're reading it going, you know, and this is really for women to read. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. You know, oh, I want it all. I want to read it. <laughs> and I got my photo down here and my name, a little bit about the author. And here's something too. When I took this picture, and I wanted a picture of a male on the front cover. I didn't want the head of the male to be seen. I cut that off, as you can see. You cannot tell. Does this guy have dark hair, blonde hair, gray hair, red hair, no hair? What's he look like? Blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes? You can't tell. That leaves mystery for the reader to imagine, well, I want someone with dark hair. You know, it doesn't matter. That's some of the thought processes that went into this cover. And I brought the roses over to the back. And what I did was I put this sort of uh, dark covering over the roses so that you can really see the text. I just didn't want this bright red rose. No, I'm going to put a little dark covering over it. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And of course, it's a romance book fantasy, so I'm going to use a font that sort of cursive kind of style. I like it. I hope those who read it like it too. Okay. Now, once our covers are designed, the front, the spine, the back, and they're looking good and everything's within the guides and nothing's bleeding over and everything looks just real good, it's time to prepare this image because this is an image that we're going to have here. It's time to export this image into a PDF for the printer. And that's so easy. Watch. File. Export. PDF. Oh, isn't that great? Look how easy that is. I love Affinity Designer. 300 DPI. Okay, minimum 300 DPI. Export. And we're going to export this into the same folder, the printer folder, where the interior pages are. Because when I go to the printer, I'm just going to look up this folder, the printer folder. I'm going to find my covers and my interior pages files, PDF version, and I'm going to upload those files to the printer. So we want to name this export as covers, 
underscore, you know, my amazing book title and the date and everything like that. Covers. So I know that these are the covers. So let's go ahead and do that. And it literally just takes a few seconds. What are we talking about here? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's done. Now this image, this cover design, back, spine, front, that we've created and built and generated, we've now converted it to a PDF so we can upload it to the printer. Now all we need is an account over at kdp.com so we can upload our files to them, not only have them print our book, but also publish them on amazon.com. Come on, I'll show you what that process is like. But before we do, comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this video. Did you like it? What ideas did you get when it comes to designing covers? Do you have a better understanding of what goes into a cover, front, spine, back? Let me know. Comment in the comment section below. I'll comment right back as soon as I can. And hey, come on, let's get to the next video. We're so close to ordering a paperback book oh, to review in hand. Come on, let's go. Let's check it out.